Chapter 10 Departure The rest of the afternoon had been a torrent of activity for both Twilight and Applejack. Spike as well, since he not only had to try and pack his own bag, but he had to perform his usual duty of making sure Twilight didn't overpack in one of her frenzied attempts to be prepared for anything. Owlicious flew to Fluttershy's on his own accord, offering Peewee a lift. Applejack had dropped Winona off herself sometime earlier, ensuring all pets would be cared for during the week away. Twilight arrived at the farmhouse late afternoon, finding the royal chariot she had requested. Spike was behind her, muttering about the current arrangements. I still don't see why you have to do this, Spike said, in a tone that took great care in being as whiny as possible. I mean, it's not like I'd burn down the library or anything. I know, Spike, and honestly, I think I'd be less worried about you if that was my biggest concern about leaving you alone. At least most kids would have partying as an excuse for that. What? Twilight spun around and looked at her young charge right in the eyes with the softest and most comforting expression she could manage, which, after a decade of practice, was a very effective one, one which always disarmed Spike's defenses. Spike, I've been thinking about you a lot over the past year, ever since that birthday. Spike winced. As little as Twilight liked remembering that day, Spike liked remembering it even less. I've been thinking about your future, Spike, and at first it was just how you're going to grow up. But then I realized something, and it disturbed me much more. What's that? That you spend a lot of your time working, so much that I don't know you. What are you talking about? Of course you know me. You know me better than any pony. I know you love food, and Pee-wee, and me, she said. And I know you love working for me, but I've never seen you just have fun. You read a few books sometimes, but I've never seen you just go out and play with any of the other kids. You've never had a hobby or even spent a day just having fun. The only time you did, you ended up as Applejack's servant. You don't know how to act like a foal. I'm not a foal, he said, looking away from her. You're as good as, she said, reaching out and stroking his head. She brought her hoof under his chin and made him look her in the eyes. At least to me you are and I'm worried that you don't know anything besides being my assistant. I want you to learn to be your own dragon. I don't want you to be hanging off me forever. Why? Am I doing something wrong? Of course not. You're a wonderful assistant, but I want you to be more than that. I want you to be happy, Spike, and I don't want that to end when I'm... Please, don't say it. Please. It's going to happen, and I want you to carry on in spite of it. That's why I want you to have your own life, to discover yourself. You're a wonderful dragon, Spike, and I think it's time you realize that. That's why the Apples aren't going to be giving you any chores. Your job is to play with Apple Bloom and her friends. By the time I get back, I want you to have a hobby or some kind of activity that you can do for part of the day. But what about being your assistant? I'll just have to get along without you sometimes. In fact, you're forbidden from working so hard from now on. I want you to be able to have fun from now on. But, Twilight... Listen, Spike, you trust me, don't you? Of course I do! And trust me when I say that I'm doing this because it's best for you. Spike looked at her for a long time. Then he took a deep breath, exhaled, and said, All right. I won't do any chores, I promise. Twilight kissed him goodbye, causing him to make a big deal out of it, but as soon as he was sure the apples weren't looking, he gave her a kiss on the cheek. Spike watched the chariot take off with Twilight and Applejack inside it. He had wanted to watch it until it had reached the castle visible on the mountain, but he found himself being pushed along by Apple Bloom long before that happened. Come on, Spike, we gotta get! Hey, what are you doing? Granny Smith and Big Mac said that you ain't supposed to work, which means you get to play. And that means you can help us with our new crusade. Oh no, he said trying to run, but Applejack clenched his tail in her teeth and pulled him along. Come on, we're gonna be cutie my crusader skateboarders today. Spike slowed down. That doesn't sound so bad. Yeah. AJ says we're not allowed in Ghastly Gorge, but Scootaloo reckons we can build some ramps that'll be just as good and one of us can stand at the top and throw rocks down. Unfortunately, 
Spike didn't escape her grasp. Angel was fuming. Rainbow Dash had returned and she was wearing a black dress she had commissioned from Rarity in a rush job. Ponies looked pretty disgusting to him, but Fluttershy blushed and had difficulty breathing. Grinning lecherously, Rainbow Dash took her hoof and kissed it, moving up her leg and ending at her cheek, then capturing her lips and sticking her tongue in. Angel wretched. He needed to stop this quick. It was hard enough to get privacy in the cottage with the usual animals around, but when Fluttershy was pet-sitting it became near impossible. Owlicious in particular kept too close a watch on him, and adding in Winona's idiocy made his head hurt just thinking about it. But he finally found a place to plan in a small corner that even the mice didn't bother with. Paper, nicked from Twilight's library, was spread around, his messy writing dotting them. He needed a plan, but nothing came to him. He couldn't ask the other animals, they all hated him as much as Fluttershy allowed hatred, which wasn't much, but they still refused to help him. Hi, Angel! Angel jumped three hooves before spinning around, seeing Winona wagging her tail and smiling, tongue hanging out. What you doin'? Nothing, he said. Get lost. Why would I do that? She asked without the slightest bit of sarcasm. Getting lost is no fun. I got lost as a pup, but Mistress found me and it was okay. Mistress is great, and now she has a mate, so I get two mistresses. Angel placed his head in his paw. They're not married, they're just two alcoholics. Now beat it! Beat what? Angel pulled his ears. Just go away! You think we should? The new voice belonged to Owlicious, who perched right beside Angel and glared down at him. It didn't take much for an owl to look intimidating to a bunny. What are you up to? Whatever do you mean? You're planning. That means trouble for us. And Miss Fluttershy. He glared down at him. You aren't upset that she's dating Miss Dash, are you? I most certainly am, he began, but Owlicious's glare silenced him. Hey, you're doing bad things, Winona said, as if it were a great surprise. You better not do that. I know Tank likes things right now. You better... See the ball? Winona perked up, looking at Angel's empty paw, which he was waving in the air. Ball? You have a ball? Owlicious sighed. Winona, I explain this. There is no ball. Hey, Winona said. There never was a ball. She turned her anxious smile into a glare. You lied to me. You're right, Angel said, slumping his shoulders in shame. I don't. Because Owlicious took it. What? That was all Owlicious had time to get out before Winona turned her anger on him. You took my ball! No, no, Winona, listen. Ball! Owlicious flew up and away with Winona on his talons, yelling for the ball he didn't have. Losers, Angel muttered. Still, the two of them and Tank could be trouble in the next few days. He had to be careful. The flight was not a long one, so they did not have much of a chance to talk. They found themselves walking down the hallway toward the princess's quarters, almost not daring to speak. Twilight felt her stomach flutter. Celestia had shown no anger in her letter, or even disapproval. But now that she was so close to her beloved mentor, she was scared. Scared of a lecture, scared of a disappointed look. Deep breaths. She couldn't lose it now. Unfortunately, the downside of such a trick was that those around you knew when you were pulling it. Applejack noticed it, having become used to it since their little misadventure with the Equestria Games Commissioner, and nuzzled her a bit to the side. I'm sure the princess ain't mad or disappointed. How do you know? I did something stupid. Oh, what if... Relax, Applejack said, trying to mix firmness with a soothing tone, which thankfully she had experience with. She's never been real mad at you, except... She looked like she had been stabbed in the heart. Except when she shouldn't have been. Applejack. The doors they were passing swung open, interrupting the conversation with a loud bang. Twilight Sparkle! Fair Applejack! Both ponies jumped. It was Princess Luna not using her royal canterlot voice, but still sounding commanding, as she usually did. I wish conference with you. Please, enter my chambers. Twilight was frozen for a moment, debating whether these instructions overrode her teachers. Finally, figuring that there was no rush, she obeyed and Applejack wasn't far behind. As the door slammed shut, Luna spoke. I need your knowledge, Twilight. 
please, will you answer my queries? Of course, Twilight said, snapping to attention, her confidence replacing her worry. Ask me anything. I will... She trailed off because she noticed the grin on Luna's face, which was so wide that it was splitting her face. She leaned down until she was eye level and said in a sweet voice, How well does the cow pony ride? Both Twilight and Applejack turned red as Luna fell onto her back, laughing hard all over again. H how many ponies saw the tape? Applejack said with a hint of dread. Oh, just... Luna had to stop to let the last of her laughter drop off. Just me and my sister. And Blue Blood. You showed Blue Blood? Twilight said. He'll never let me live this down. But then again, no pony will. If you'll excuse us, Princess, Applejack said, moving towards the door. Hold up, Luna said. I need one more thing. Twilight Sparkle, could you turn around, please? Puzzled, Twilight obeyed. Applejack looked at the scene, trying to piece it out, and then gave a start, because she noticed the lusting stare. Oh, sweet Celestia! Thank you, Twilight, she said, a mischievous smile still on her face. You can go now. Still confused, Twilight left. Applejack followed, looking at the floor. Well, that was humiliating, Twilight said. And I don't know what Luna was doing. Did you notice anything, Applejack? Applejack? Oh, sweet Celestia, Luna likes her. Sweet, sweet Celestia, how can I compete with that? Applejack? Huh? What? She looked at her wife. Sorry, Twi. Distracted. I don't blame you, Twilight said. Well, here we are. Princess Celestia's chambers were being watched by two guards, one showing age and one who looked to be a new recruit. Good evening, Colonel Butterscotch. The old-timer grinned. He had been a guard since Twilight had been a young student, one who would have free access to her teacher's quarters at all hours, even in the middle of the night when she had a nightmare and needed her closer available parental figure to give her a wing to sleep under. He had a sneaking suspicion Celestia looked more fondly upon those unannounced slumber parties than Twilight did, having heard the filly giggle as she blew raspberries on her stomach and Celestia's soft crooning lullabies. Hello, Twilight. The old unicorn did the customary changeling check, an intrusive element in the old routine. Once her identity was confirmed, he began opening the chamber door. Whoa, whoa, the young guard said. We're just letting him in? Rule number one, rookie. You never... Ever deny Twilight Sparkle access anywhere after you assure that it's her. All that accomplishes is getting the princess angry, plus whatever Twilight did to you to make you move. The door was open now. Thanks, Twilight said. Thank you, Applejack nodded. She followed and stopped suddenly when a strange tingling entered her mouth. It tasted sweet. It was butterscotch. Twilight turned to the old guard. Still not missing a beat, are you? The old-timer shrugged. It just doesn't feel right unless I sneak you a sweet before dinner. Twilight was giggling as she continued, and Applejack merely chewed her surprise gift. Entering the princess's chambers, she looked around and was a bit surprised that she wasn't surprised. Celestia's room was one of simple elegance. It looked better than any part of her farmhouse, but still looked like a room she'd be right at home in. The most fancy item was a large side room in view that contained bookcases of Celestia's private collection of books, and Applejack had a feeling it was only that big from a millennium of collecting. Princess, Twilight said. Applejack perked up and turned to see Twilight running to nuzzle her mentor, and it replaced the book room as the most amazing thing Applejack saw. Not because Twilight was so informal. That surprise had come that first adventure, when their bows were contrasted with Twilight running up and nuzzling her. It was the fact that Celestia wasn't wearing her regalia. She had only seen this once after the infamous wedding when they all had to go apologize. The bridesmaids, Spike, and Celestia herself all marching to Twilight's chambers to beg forgiveness. But a retainer had joined them, to every pony's confusion, except Celestia. Once outside her room, Celestia ordered a stop. Then she removed her crown and her other trappings and passed them along. Her servants had been scandalized, saying it wouldn't do to be seen like this. She merely barked that he best make sure they're not interrupted. They had all understood once the apologies began. When she was wearing that crown, she was a princess. Without it, she was merely Celestia, a friend. 
That's what she wanted to be that evening. That night, she had been almost on her knees in tears, crying, while Twilight, feeling more embarrassed than anything, begged her not to feel guilty. Here, however, she was relaxed and calm. Even with her sighs and her flowing mane, she seemed so... approachable. It's good to see you, Twilight. And you too, Applejack. She motioned to two cushions in front of her, and both took their seats. For a long time, the three just looked at each other. Finally, taking a breath, Celestia spoke. Twilight, do you like bananas? What? The Royal Kitchen got a surplus shipment, she explained, floating a bunch over. And we're trying to use them all before they spoil. Oh, sure, she said, taking a banana off the bunch. Applejack, I know you're an apple mare, but... I ain't that obsessed with apples, she muttered, taking one after setting her hat off to the side. Good. Now then, I suppose we have a lot to talk about. She smiled. I'm not upset with you, Twilight. You aren't? She shook her head. Honestly, I'm a little relieved that you did this. That caused Twilight's eyes to practically pop out of her head, and Celestia suppressed a giggle. The last thing that Twilight needed in this conversation was to think that she was laughing at her. Yes. You see, in all those years you grew up under me, I never saw you ever have a night like this. I used to stay up late at night worrying about the wild times that would happen once you hit your teenage years, and when they never happened, it actually worried me more. I don't understand. It was the beginning of my realization that you were rejecting friendship. All you were for the longest time was my student. You never moved out from serving me to serve yourself, to find out more about yourself. That's... Twilight began, but she stopped, her eyes widening at the realization. Applejack laughed, having realized the same thing. That's just what you were lecturing Spike on for we left, she grinned. Celestia seemed interested. Really? I suppose I should have kept a closer eye on him. No, Twilight moaned, and it was enough to get Applejack to stop laughing. It's my fault Spike's like that. Twat, I think Spack's problems are too different from yours. He looks up to me. He probably learned from me. Oh, Spike. Mothers make mistakes, Celestia sighed. Applejack saw the gaze she was giving Twilight and knew she was talking about herself. No pony has raised their child perfectly. Twilight blushed. I'm not a mother. If you insist, Celestia said. That's a topic for another day. Right now, let's return to the topic at hoof. And that's you. She looked at her mentor. You're actually glad I got drunk and nearly caused a scandal. In a way. Believe me, you wouldn't be the first. I remember a hundred and fifty years after me and Luna took the throne. Oh, that was a wild night. Though the griffin was pretty cute. Twilight looked at her and debated about asking for details, but decided against it. I'm not encouraging wild nights like this, Celestia said. Please don't think that. I want you to keep your hoof down, but for the most part I'm glad you're finally getting out there. You merely made a mistake, you don't need to worry. Twilight looked like she had been given a gift. Celestia reached over and nuzzled her. Thank you, princess. You're welcome. Now then, I assume you'll want to go on your search as soon as possible. Of course. And I won't stop you. For the most part, there is one thing I want you to promise me. She turned to Applejack. Both of you. And what's that? Applejack asked. If you suspect that the Changeling Queen is behind this, I want you not to make a move without first consulting me, Luna, or Blue Blood. Applejack blinked. Blue Blood? Yes, he's the one we placed in charge of finding them. What? That jerk? What are you talking about? Twilight said. Blue Blood's a bit shallow, but are you kidding? He insulted me at the gala and he harassed Rare. Really? Twilight sounded confused, of course, but also a bit disturbed. I think I'm going to need to have a talk with him before we leave. I'm afraid that won't be possible, Celestia said. He's in a business meeting and he cannot be disturbed. So, finally, Rainbow Dash yelled, Okay, I get it. I won't leave you anywhere anymore. Now please let me take this thing off. Blue Blood laughed as loudly as he dared in the restaurant. 
I must say, your friends sound interesting. Perhaps I should visit Ponyville sometime. Indeed, Rarity grinned, gulping down her drink. This is delicious. I must say, it's making me dizzy. Yes, Blueblood said. He stopped. He motioned to the waiter. You've been bringing us non-alcoholic drinks, right? I've been bringing you your non-alcoholic drinks. Please tell me you're joking. Uh, no. Every time you say non-alcoholic, you don't want any pony to know you're drinking, so, uh... Have my drinks been his non-alcoholic as well? E yes, you said you wanted what he's having, so... We've been drinking these awfully fast, haven't... Wait, wait, there it goes. I truly don't want you entangled with them anyway. You've suffered enough to keep Equestria safe from this threat. You leave it to them. Princess, it's not that I don't think you couldn't, she said. But I don't think you should have to. You have your own concerns. She was looking at the rings. Yes, Princess, she sighed. Now then, I assume you have a plan for your search? Applejack blinked as she realized she didn't know Twilight's plan either. Hey, yeah, what are we going to do, Twi? We'll make a few visits, Twilight said. We'll be going to Manhattan first. Trixie has a stage show there, and she's our first suspect. Next, the Griffin Embassy in Cloudsdale, where Gilda is staying. An embassy? Yeah, turns out she's a guard there. Yaks. Be careful there, Celestia said. Remember the relations between our countries can be damaged if you're too rough. Of course. Next, Flim and Flam are doing investment ventures in Van Hoover. After that, it's Discord or Chrysalis, and I have no clue what to do then. And what if none of them did it? Applejack asked. Then, I don't know. She sounded like she suspected it would come to that. I've brought enough books to study how to get the rings off. Keep dreaming. Applejack banged her ring. Celestia forgot herself and laughed. Twilight's ears drooped. I think I can get it off. I hope. Celestia stopped and looked at her student. She lifted a wing and Twilight rose underneath it, nuzzling her. Then she lifted her other wing and looked at Applejack. The farm pony blushed when she recognized the invitation, but rose and moved forward all the same. She felt a little awkward at first, but when the wing closed over her and pinned her to Celestia's side, she felt suddenly contented. I'm sure you'll do fine. You've both saved Equestria many times. I've seen you grow and learn. You'll both do fine. I have faith in you. Twilight nuzzled her teacher deeply, but Applejack just sat there, wondering if that you included her. To be continued.